Well, I've already printed my image, and this is a picture of a, uh, or a scan rather, of a paper that I made by soaking it in rust. And the instructions for doing that are in the Hacking the Digital Print book on how to make your own custom textured papers. So I scanned that and then I printed it out on the DOS Premium film, which is the film that we use when we're going to do a Wondersauce transfer uh, onto this Arches Plantain paper. The paper is made for alternative printmaking processes, but I found that it works really well with the Wondersauce uh, because it uh, keeps the moisture on the surface of the paper, which is what we need. It's a good idea to pre-wet your brush and then squeeze out a little bit of the water so that um, the Wonder Sauce goes into the brush more evenly and you don't get streaks on the paper. Usually about a half an hour before I do a transfer, I'll shake up the Wonder Sauce and then I let it sit so that the bubbles will rise to the surface. Pour on a about a tablespoon onto the sheet of paper. You'll notice that the Wonder Sauce is very stringy and that's what helps keep it on the surface of the paper. So what you want to do is smooth this out and make a nice glassy, glossy surface. Make sure you have room to push your image down, get everything out of the way. So well, this looks nice and wet without puddles at this point. Just set the brush down and move the roller, push it across, don't roll it, hang on to the image as you get to the end and then go all the way off. You're going to get some of the sauce on your roller but just quickly take a rag and wipe that off. We're going to wait one minute and then the image will be pulled off uh, of the plantain paper and then we'll let that completely dry. All right, our one minute is up. We will remove the tape and then carefully take the paper and peel it off. And you can see that we have a perfect image transfer of the rusted paper right on the surface of the plantain. Now we're going to let that dry and then we'll deslime it. And by desliming, I mean we're going to take the emulsion that was on the film that was the inkjet receiver. That now is on top of this image. And if we were to try to do our block print on top, then that image would, uh, it, it wouldn't receive the block print really well. So we're going to let this dry. The next step is to place the uh, print in a tray of water and just rock it back and forth for a few minutes. You'll begin to see that there's a layer of slime that loosens and floats up off the top of the ink. And we do need to remove that so that we can get a nice clean uh, block print when we get to that step. This is pretty much cleaned off now. Do a couple of last rinses, make sure it's all off. Feel along the sides, make sure it's all off of the paper. But don't rub the print. Ah, that's absolutely perfect. We can hang this diagonally from the corner uh, like this and let it dry overnight. Or if you're in a hurry, you can uh, dry it in a dehydrator. Uh, I use a food dehydrator for drying a lot of the image transfers that I do. But it's sufficient just to hang this like you would in any other photographic print when you're working in a dark room. This is the laser cut shape that Jake made. Um, I had gotten his file off of the Creative Cloud. I took it into Illustrator and turned it into a vector file that the laser could understand. Those files, uh, when they're opened, are stroked with a .001 red RGB 255 line. And that is the cutting line that the laser understands so that it can cut the shapes out. This is cut out of a quarter inch thick piece of Baltic birch. Uh, I want to have the wood grain show in my transfer when I'm done. 
For a backing, I cut a piece of Medex board, which is dimensionally stable. That is a um, material that is made without uh, formaldehyde or any chemicals. Just use a good wood glue. Um, this Gorilla Glue is great. You'll want to make sure that all the parts of the plate are glued so that if there's moisture that gets under it, you don't have little pieces that will curl up or warp. You want to be able to use this plate more than one time. So be careful about how the gluing is done. Now my backing plate is exactly the same size as the laser cutout. This is a much faster way to get a wood block print than engraving out areas and recessing them because when you're using a vector file, I have a really nice deep plate now. Now I'm just going to set a weight on it and let that dry overnight. The next step is to mix up a little bit of shellac uh, to seal the wooden plate so that the inks don't soak into the wood. Um, I use shellac and I dilute it 50% with Everclear alcohol. Uh, this is a grain alcohol. You can also use denatured alcohol. Uh, it will, it's the same product for diluting uh, the shellac, except that I don't like the odor from the denatured alcohol, so I do use the Everclear. Uh, the 91 or 98% um, product. Little trick, when you're uh, dipping out your shellac, I cut a little paper cup um, and use that as a dipper. I don't like cleaning up shellac brushes and tools, so I use things that are disposable. Uh, I simply dip that into the shellac and put it into another container and then Put in an equal amount of the Everclear. The reason for doing that is we want the shellac to be diluted so that it soaks into the wood. I also do not like cleaning uh, foam brushes uh, that have shellac in them. So I have this little trick I do. I use these uh, pieces of foam that you can get at the hardware store, therefore insulating around doors and windows. I cut off a piece and put it in a clip like this and then I can just open that clip up and throw it away when I'm done. So you're just going to dip into this diluted shellac and coat it onto the wood. I like to also get this uh, around the edges because we will be washing off this plate when we're done and it would be nice to have it sealed so that water doesn't soak into the uh, wood. Also put enough on so that you're soaking into the backing board that's on here. Again, this backing board is made out of Medex, which is dimensionally stable. And because of that, it helps controlling any warping that might occur after we wash the plate in water. For the print, I do use water-based inks, strictly because I don't like to have a lot of chemicals in my studio. Admittedly, this shellac is alcohol-based and it does have an odor, but I don't use that much of it. There isn't really a good alternative for sealing the grain in the board that is non-solvent based. But shellac has been used for a long time by artists for this process. Okay, now we're going to let that dry and then we'll sand it and then apply a second coat of shellac and it'll be ready to be used as a block print. This first coating of shellac is dry now, so I'm going to take some 400 grit sandpaper and sand down the grain. When the wood gets wet, the grain raises up. Should you like to have that grain in your print, you would skip this step. I also like to sand down these edges so that they can have good contact with the uh, paper when I do the print. 
and sand off these little pointed corners here so that they don't cut your paper. I use a Swiffer to wipe up the dust. You can buy these in a hardware store. They're replacement pads for the uh, mops that you use on a f hardwood floor. You can see how it picks up all that dust off of there. And shake out any dust from the center. And now we're ready to apply a second coat of the shellac. Again, get it all into the cutouts so that the water that we get on this when we clean it afterwards uh, doesn't warp the uh, boards. Because this was weighted overnight, I know that the board has not warped. And now when we're done with our handmade tool, and uh, the instructions for doing these tools is also in the Hacking the Digital Print book, all these little shortcuts. We just throw that away now and we have no cleanup from the shellac. To start with, I'm going to ink uh, the plate up and I'm gonna do a quick test print on a scrap piece of the Reeves BFK as a solid color. That way I'm going to be able to, number one, charge the plate and also uh, make sure that everything is going to print as I expect it. Now on a small print, it's pretty easy to understand exactly what's going to happen, but sometimes if you're doing a larger piece, something might have a void in it that you really don't want to have a void. Like I see there's a little piece missing here, but that's not going to affect my print at all. I'm using a Speedball water-based ink, but the Akua inks, which are an oil-based water, well, they're not oil-based, they're a water-based oil block printing ink, work very nicely. Um, I, sometimes I don't like to use those because they dry by absorption, and when they dry by absorption, if there's any resistance in the paper, that ink may never dry. Whereas this Speedball ink will always dry because it is purely a water-based ink. So to do the print, I'm going to just turn the plate over, position it on the paper, and press. Now, if you do this on the floor, you can stand on it to press it. You know, just do a body press or, and this is an old sheet of paper that I have on here, use a baron and press the paper and rub it. Using the back side of old prints is a good way to use up paper and understand exactly how your print's gonna turn out. Uh, so I'll peel this off now, pretty nice. I can see that I need to get more ink in the center area. Um, this resist that you see in here, that's actually the grain of the wood that shows. All right, I've inked the plate once and done a test print on a blank piece of sheet of paper. And now I'm going to ink the plate again, now that it's been pre-charged and on the rust colored paper uh, that was the Arches Plantain. You want an even coating on the plate. You don't want to have uh, thick gummy ink. You want to have it nice and even across the whole plate. If you look at it at an angle, you can see when that ink is uh, properly applied. Usually by the time you do the third print, now the plate is nicely charged and you can do an addition. I'm gonna turn this over and be careful not to touch any of the inked part of the plate. 
position it. Again, you can stand on this if you want to. Okay, let's turn this over and use the Baron again to really press this hard. And I like to press on the edge. This will make a little plate mark, which is really nice to have on a hand-pulled print. You can see where it's pressing down. Now you could say, oh, I could just put this black over my image and do this in Photoshop, but you're not going to get the hand done look to your work. You won't have the plate mark, you won't have the uh, imperfections that happen during this uh, inking and printing process. And when I, remember I sanded off these pointed corners, so now I'm able to take the Baron and rub that corner and get a really nice uh, plate mark around the corners too. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh, that's a nice print. And I, I can see that I have some dimensional quality to the ink because of the cutouts in the plate, uh, which really gives it a beautiful handmade look.